You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 12th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where show prep makes the dream work. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. How are you doing? Thanks for all the show prep you did. For sure, this. you're you're two you're two rooms away, so I have a pretty good idea how you're doing. But you know, <laughs> for the record, since this is a recorded record of this date and time, I want to go on the record as saying I love with my wife, and I'm terribly thrilled that we're still doing podcasts all this time. And show prep, um, in our case, basically means everything we're already doing all week long. We say podcastable a lot during the week, and we it's do. because we're thinking about you guys. We are and how we can share the week with you. And this was a good week, Drift Glass. Yeah. Pretty good week across the board. Uh, you know, I have to, I do have to take back part of what I said last week, though, about waiting until August for our vaccines because we got our first shot this week. Yay! We did. We did. We got the Pfizer. We'll tell everybody because we know how interested you are in this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got the Pfizer. Uh, sore arms, as many people have reported. And for us, that was it. We were fortunate. No other side effects. We had to push some older people out of the way, um, which <laughs> no, happens. We did not. Which happens. You know, that's that's just the way things work in America. And I got to say, yeah, it was easy and convenient and relatively painless. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. I did not get a lollipop, as I was promised by Joe Biden repeatedly on the campaign trail. So I consider this a Biden fail. So <laughs> there. We just went by our local pharmacy. A chain pharmacy, let's mm -hmm. put it that way. We were eligible, according to the state of Illinois and Sangamon mm -hmm. County rules, we were eligible for a vaccine. And you, slip, you slip your mayor 20 bucks and amazing things no. happen. Amazing thing. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. No. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so we got our shots and, and we didn't wait till August. And now Joe Biden says we can't even wait till August. We have to do it by, you know, be eligible by May 1st, everybody mm -hmm. 18 and up. So... International you know. Day of Labor, I might add. More socialist overtones, more <laughs> communist overtones to the Biden we, plan. We know you don't turn on this podcast to hear us mock and repeat Fox News talking points. No. But um, no. But yes, it was a good week. Uh, the first one, first good, good week in a long time. Yeah. And uh, as you wrote in our notes, Drift Class, it gave us enough breathing room to slow down and take a look at how much damage we've sustained getting here. Yeah. And uh, this week, a number of news outlets had one year anniversary of COVID being declared a global pandemic by the World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. uh, the week that uh, both, you know, in, in the public consciousness, Tom Hanks having COVID and the basketball teams shutting down. Mid game. Yeah. A, mid game. Just everybody yeah. go home. Uh, those were things that woke people up to oh this is real mm -hmm. americans i mean yep. Uh, yep and i love this analogy that you had of like at the end of the blues mobile and the blues brothers we knocked nazis out of the way evaded barricades ramp jumped over opposition and got to the county clerk's office just in time to save the orphanage <laughs> with the american rescue act mm-hmm uh, and and the fact that perhaps the lighter doesn't work, and I think you mean by that the fifteen dollar minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, the lighter doesn't work in this car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll get there. Uh, I think I think that's coming up. Um, and AOC had a Instagram live where she was explaining to her followers all the good that this bill does, and she said there is an Easter egg in this bill regarding student loans and it portends i think that's the right word <laughs> yeah a future in which student loans will be addressed and so i think it's really important to recognize there are democrats in congress that still have things on their wish list that oh, were not met by this yes yes they do <laughs> and now that they are in control of congress 
Mm-hmm. A lot of them mm-hmm. are going to let their voices be known in a more substantive way and can right. let, their, let their voices. They can they can talk past uh, Mitch McConnell. Um, yes, exactly. By, by one vote. And that's really important to remember. Um, yeah, but like the Bluesmobile, uh, having arrived at our destination, uh, we can finally fall apart for a while. Yeah. Because, yeah. geez, it's been a long day. It's been a long month. It's been a long year. It's been a, it's it was been a long a, four years. Yeah. Yes. And it was, a, it was a completely unexpected four years. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it was not mm-hmm. unexpected to us that Donald Trump would win the Republican nomination. That's the big schism between us and a lot of people on the right who are now um, in Joe Biden's corner and uh, supposedly our allies, that they just didn't see it coming. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a big unaddressed problem that we have in that they just can't quite wrap their heads around the fact that their party, their whole party, all of the people in their party are the problem. They, they, they read polls and they, they look at the voting record that not a single Republican voted for any of this shit. Um, that they, they, they're pretending the insurrection never happened. And they, there's always this level of childlike astonishment that the Republican party is full of Republicans. And I can't trust those people until they get over it and, and start acknowledging the fact that they were part of the problem and they were there at the creation. But that's not this podcast this week. This is uh, mm-hmm. this is about where a lot of people are this week. And that is this very um, not unusual for a human being, but unusual for the media to try to understand what humans are going through, what we're going through. We're overjoyed and we're grieving. You know, we're very hopeful and we're exhausted. We are very relieved and we're very, very traumatized all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that's not something mm-hmm. that you can really you know, put in a Chiron or have a reporter put a microphone in someone's face and talk about in, in a way that makes sort of media bullet point sense. But it's the truth. It's, it's, it feels like we can finally peek over the lip of the foxhole and there's not a terrifying monster out there firing back at us every fucking minute of the day. The bad guys are still there. But the the horrible thing, the the lurching monstrosity that was gobbling up the earth and destroying everything in its path, is halted, mm-hmm. and we can mm-hmm. we can take a moment to acknowledge that. And meanwhile, hate to take you back to the right wing, but yeah, if if it if it wasn't obvious that they are in a bubble before, mm-hmm. watching them this week uh, proves that they are simply in a bubble of unreality. Yeah. And they've returned to the only thing they know how to do, oppose, obstruct, completely lacking in new ideas or policies or coherent beliefs. Uh, the, all they know how to do is abuse, lie, and try to hang on to power through cheating. Uh, and to do that, they have to keep their coalition continually angry, aggrieved, terrified, and distracted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we saw that. Uh, I think the the winner of the week in that, in terms of distracting people, uh-huh. was Tucker Carlson. Well, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and the, and the fact is, and we know this because you know we're in the business, peripherally in the business. <laughs> um, political media, the revenue, the the income stream for political media generally is way down, mm-hmm. um, which makes perfect sense because after four years of living in a foxhole and and taking incoming fire from every direction. People would like a break from 24 hour fascist shock and awe. Mm-hmm, and, you know, mm-hmm. they, they don't, look, we won. We got over the goal line. Now, there's more goal lines to go. We're not, you know, in Berlin at the moment. We are, we have breached the beachhead at Normandy and we are crossing the French countryside. Uh, but this is not over, but it is still okay to celebrate. It's still mm-hmm. okay to say this. We've done an accomplish. We've accomplished an enormous thing. The single largest piece of progressive legislation since the Great Society passed yesterday, yeah. um, with no again no Republican support. They will, of course, stand in front of the checks and take credit for it. That's Ed what, McMahon, gigantic checks, yeah. people. Yep. Here you go. And yep. we have to not. And this is where I have a little more confidence in the Biden people and the Democrats who are in there who are scarred. From their experience of the Obama yes. administration. Yes, When they, exactly. they did this enormous thing. They did Obamacare. They, they did a, a, a stimulus package that was way too small. And they just got the shit knocked out of them um, by people who just lied and lied and lied and lied. And the idea that they made the John Kerry mistake. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Surely no one would believe this bullshit about my, my war record. 
I don't have yeah. to worry about, you know, rebutting it because no, who in their right mind would believe it? Well, about half the country believed it. Yeah. And yep. the people who went through that with the affordable, with the uh, affordable care act and with the stimulus package and saw, you know, governors and mayors who hated them, congressmen and senators who hated them taking credit for it. Mm -hmm. uh, people in Kentucky mm -hmm. having to put white face on, Obamacare, so the black guy had no credit for it, and then it was acceptable to roll it out across Kentucky, um, right? And just like, what the fuck is going on? You know, this is something we did. You hated us for it, and now you want credit for it, and you still want to hate us for it. That is, I think, a lesson, a bitter lesson, that the Democrats, at least the ones who are currently running the government, seem to have learned at some level down in their skin. They, they sort of understand that, right? Because the listeners of this show know. Uh, they don't need to be sold on this act. No. And and the idea that you would go on a tour and send everyone on your team on a tour of the nation to sell a program that's already passed, right. that's already signed, that's already in law, and you're going to go to Colorado and and sell this package uh, is because of Obama. Right. It's because of what happened to Obama. Mm hmm Um. They're going to now tour the country, taking with them the press mm -hmm. who are programmed to do one thing, which is cover the noisiest thing in the room. Right. In there, in there, whatever's on the horizon. Well, haven't you put down major for biting that guy? Right. The first question, you know, they want to ask of Joe Biden, which is why Joe Biden is not taking any questions currently. Yeah. Well, he's not, he's not taking any questions currently, A, because he's busy. Mm hmm. And uh, Fox News is screaming about wanting a press conference that they're not going to cover. Right. So. <laughs> well, and, and there's, mean, a, there's a woman <laughs> named Jen Psaki now who's the actual White House press secretary. Right. Who takes and questions. And takes has, questions even from a boy named Ducey. Right. Who she and, just uh, loves. loves she like likes she's to flatten one, him every day. It. Yeah. And, and she, she also, there are subject matter experts. It's yeah. like, I don't need to be up here telling you about uh, how the, the vaccines work. We have a guy here from Pfizer who will tell you all about how it works. And we have mm -hmm. a gentleman here named Fauci who will talk to you about how, how we're going to solve this problem. I'm the president. I, I, my job is to preside over this, to, to get these people together, form a team out of them, and then get the hell out of their way and ask them periodically, what do you need? What can I get for you? How can I smooth the path? How can I use my political capital to make this go faster? That's how. But, but I do think he understands in a way that the former guy uh, mm -hmm. took advantage of. Yes. Yeah. That you can be, if you're president of the United States, you can be on the front page of the paper every single day. Yes. All you have to do is go in front of the press and make a lot of noise. And yep. the press will cover it. That's their job. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can sit back <laughs> And get shit done mm -hmm. and coordinate government and steer this massive machine mm -hmm. toward helping people and then take the credit and then go out and sell the package as government working for you. Yes. And that is the part that Obama left off. Yes. Well, and uh, well, I worked mm -hmm. in government, as you know, for 10 years. Yes. Yes. And we did many, many amazing, wonderful, good, innovative things. And part, I had a gargantuan portfolio. I had more responsibilities. It was ridiculous what I was responsible for. One of which was sort of, you know, finding the stories of what the department was doing and telling them. And it was like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. There were all these mm -hmm. wonderful, you know, human interest stories and success stories and tales of, of, of woe and money well spent and what a wise investment this was. And you just had to sit at someone's desk and demand that they tell you because they didn't want to. That was not what they were there for. I'm here to do this job, not to, you know, do, have a parade. And mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. just didn't. And I wasn't the marketing person. They, we had a marketing person, but I was the person who understood the policies behind what was going on and could translate it for the marketing person. And it was just mm -hmm. it's something about government people. They just don't understand that a big part of their job has to be explaining to people what an awesome job they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's all Trump mm -hmm. did. That's all yeah. the Trump people did was was take credit for all kinds of shit they had nothing to do with and brag all day long <laughs> and bitch all night long. That's all they knew how to do. And I think Biden's got it exactly right. He he gave a, he gave a, a national address last night. It was short. It was competent. It was calm. It was full of emotion and sincerity. And then he walked away. 
mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. done and dusted, as they say. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about show prep because, I, you know, talking about how you do a podcast is no fun. But I did want to say something about how we prepare the show because both of us do read and write about politics all week long, politics and culture mm-hmm. and media, um, with a multiple decade long perspective on what we're seeing, which is why we believe our mission is to help you guys see the fire hose of events that sometimes seems random and terrifying in a larger historical context or cultural context. And we bring this up to contrast it with the show prep on Fox, which (laughs) consists of nothing more than rolling out of bed in the morning thinking, how am I going to fuck over the left today? What what lies am I going to tell today? And and that's the thing. If you watched right-wing media over a long enough period of time, by which I mean like three days will do you because that's Mm -hmm. all you ever need to know. (laughs) The context never changes. Only the bullshit and paranoia and lies that they used to fill up time every day changes. But the context of what they're doing never changes. That's why we don't spend a lot of time talking about Fox News because other than by death or lawsuits, nothing ever changes there. Mm-hmm. It's a wasteland. It's a, it is a Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, uh, Laura Ingram lie factory. And that's all that will ever be until it is gone from this earth. Uh, it can do no other. And so what what we bring to the table, I hope, is a context in which to see how the media, the mainstream press, the political press, the, 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 the uh, meet the press people, the Sunday morning shows react to this horrible cancer in their midst by denying it exists or looking mm-hmm. the other way or falsely equating it to what, what the left is doing. Um, they just can't cope with the fact that there's an active um, – uh, fertile, growing, authoritarian, racist, fascist movement in their midst among their colleagues. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it's not something that they that they want to talk about at all because it, that's- In a, their city. In their city, right in yeah. front of them. And this is something, and they don't talk about it because it, it, it is such an indication of the complete failure mm-hmm. of them as guardians of democracy. Right, um, right, right. Anyway- and and case in point is Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Uh, he spent hours this week slagging women in the military. You know, right after International Women's Day, we're going to take time to s- talk about uh, maternity flight suits. Yeah. You know, the, feminizing. What an outrage it is. We're feminizing the army. Well, while China's getting tough, we're getting feminine. Feminine. And right. what a terrible thing that is. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really was the stupidest fight ever. Uh, there isn't a woman in the United States Armed Forces who couldn't kick Tucker <laughs> Carlson's ass. Right. Uh, speaking of which, Tammy Duckworth, who is our <laughs> senator, she is. who is running for re-election in she 2022, uh-huh. uh, I think she came up with her uh, campaign slogan. Mm-hmm. She tweeted three words on Twitter, fuck Tucker Carlson. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's a very good campaign. So that works for me for campaign Short. slogan right there. Short Tammy Duckworth the for Senate. Yeah. Fuck Tucker Carlson. Yeah. That's- <laughs> she also made fun of uh, the fact that, you know, he was on Dancing with the Stars. Right. And uh, Tammy Duckworth, who uh, lost a leg uh, in, during her military service, mm-hmm. told everyone on Twitter that she still is a better dancer than Tucker Carlson. Yes, she so, is. She's better uh, in every way. Every way. Uh, but... Tucker Carlson succeeded uh, for his audience in taking the focus off of all the good Joe Biden and the Democrats are accomplishing this week Mm -hmm. and making sure Tucker Carlson was the center of attention. Uh, And every decent person up and down the chain of command in the United States military uh, took Carlson's indecency to task. But then that allowed him to slip into what is a very natural state for Tucker Carlson, a grief white guy. You know, you're coming after a little old me. They're all against me. The deep state's They're against, all against me. me. Mm-hmm. They're all against me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm happy to take the heat, mm-hmm. but really I'm just concerned about our country, man. Right. You right. know. About America. Uh, and this is how Fox plans to hold on to their audience is just amp up the crazy, steal the spotlight, create controversy. And then claim that, you know, we're the real victims here. You and I, Fox News audience, are getting stomped on by mm-hmm. the radical left. And that's that's how – and this is the part that um, 
the moderate Republicans who are now homeless and looking for, you know, uh, in the world. Actually, they're not homeless at all. They live at MSNBC. Um, you know, I looked over <laughs> yes, my shoulder earlier and there's Nicole Wallace asking Charlie Sykes what he thought about David Brooks. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's true, right. True. That's great. Yeah, that, that's that's liberal media for you. Uh, but they have th there's this constant. I've, I've already mentioned this during this podcast. They're constantly dumbstruck every time the, the crazy goes up a notch. Mm -hmm. And dude, mm -hmm. there's no upper limit. The upper the the, the upper threshold is an armed uprising, which we very right. nearly had already. Right. And right. the idea that you think they're going to stop now, the pot's at nine and ten is a full boil. At which point, people start shooting, and mm -hmm. they're they're mm -hmm. they're trying to inch as close to that as possible. Uh, and if there's casualties, if there's some destruction of property, if people go, go a little overboard and start you know burning things down, well, that's good TV. Mm -hmm. and, right. And, no, and, I mean, and, it's, it's Sharknado for yeah, news is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's and just as crazy as we can be and as attention grabbing as we can be. Uh, we don't have to make sense. We don't have to be based in fact. We have to get eyeballs and we have to get outrage. And that's it. And that's the problem because the that's war the is not over. Uh, the Trump is not gone. Over. Trump is definitely gone. He's he's been deprived of Twitter and is the the degenerate in his labyrinth down in Florida, fuming and fussing. And I don't give a mm -hmm. shit um, what he has to say or think about anything, which is the right answer to every question about Donald Trump. But the machine that created him, the political party that created him, is going just fine. Might win in twenty twenty two. Might take the House back. Might take the Senate back. With with the only thing they're doing now is focusing on cheating in elections. Destroying mm -hmm. people's mm -hmm. voting rights to, to hold on to power. And the party that created Donald Trump has redoubled their determination to break our democracy at any cost because fascism never sleeps in because because it can't because the the alternative once you've gone full fascist like the Republican Party has the alternative for you is either conquest or oblivion. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. get to walk back from from being an, uh, an American Nazi party now. They might get away with some of that because the Bush off machine, the eternal forgiveness machine, the absolution machine that lets the worst people in America off the hook over and over again is still out there, still going strong. But as, as of this moment, the GOP is um, has no future other than cheating its way back to power. So that is that is their entire focus. And once they get there, they have no plan. Just no. just as you know. Donald Trump's health care plan. Where is that? We we never got that, Drew Glass. I feel I feel cheated. <laughs> but the political media hasn't learned from this at all. I mean, this is the thing. It's it's they're covering this as still a both sides thing. Yes, they are. That's all they know. It's, they're wired yeah. together. And and I did this analogy came to me, I will admit, from watching um an old Dick Van Dyke episode. Okay. In which, in which case, the the the, the pickpocket um, um, gets trapped in an elevator with Rob and Laura, <laughs> and can't get out. And I'm not sure it's the perfect analogy, but the media and the left have been like like a mugger and their victim who accidentally got trapped in the elevator for four years. Mm -hmm. And during mm -hmm. that time, you know, we shared a cigarette and we 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 cooperated sort of. I mean, the the, the people who run CNN and run MSNBC became very clear to them that Donald Trump would, would like to bulldoze them into the ocean and kept calling them the enemy of the people, the enemy of the people, and, and would rile up mobs against them. At which point they started to get it through their fucking heads that these people are actually dangerous. But once the doors are open, they go right back to mugging. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're, they're just, yeah. no, okay, the, the, the crisis has passed and their default setting is I cannot sit here and report the Republican Party is the problem. I cannot mm -hmm. do it. My boss mm -hmm. will fire me. I will never work again. So I have to go. I have to find some reason to complain about both sides. I have to find a reason for it. And the Republican Party is giving them nothing to work with. You know, the, Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head on mm -hmm. the one side and a $2 trillion relief package on the other. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But – it doesn't matter. I think there's an innate faith on the part of the Republican Party that the people in the press are so craven and so wired to give them the benefit of the doubt. They're so Chuck Todd mm -hmm. that they will just invent a reason to be mad at both sides or equate both sides or say, you know what? Marjorie Taylor Greene and AOC are basically the same person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's all power grab, Dirk sure. It's all power grab. You know it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the, thank God it was a Democratic wish list. Yeah. Because Republicans have come out this week on the heels of this 
massive victory for Main Street. And I don't know why. I'm sure there is a very conscious decision in the White House not to use Main Street versus Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, In part, probably because stocks zoomed to the top (laughs) of a brand new record this week based on helping Main Street. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I mean, American Airlines unfurloughed 10,000 workers. Right. That's not bad for Main Street or Wall Street. So um, I think they decided not to have that battle because there are Democratic voters who have retirement funds. In stocks, mm-hmm. they just do, uh, but they they are saying the American people rather than uh, as the Republicans did this week. They mm-hmm. want to get rid of the estate tax, and it has finally dawned on some reporters <laughs> to take a look to see how many family farms Wait. in America uh-huh. qualify to pay an estate tax, because that's always been the argument. Oh, you're hurting the family farm. Family farms have to pay this terrible estate tax, and it forces family farms, when the farm owner dies, it forces family farms to go into bankruptcy and so on and so forth. Would you like to guess how many family farms, actual family farms Mm -hmm. in America, qualify for the, the estate tax, have to pay an estate tax if the primary owner of the farm dies, even if they're head of family, like it, understanding it's a family farm. Right. If and I, have- I mean, that could be worth $2 million. You know, it's still yeah. owned by one family. Yeah. How many family farms qualify eligible are eligible to pay an estate tax if the primary owner passes away? Can you guess that number? Um, if I have to take off my shoes and socks to count that high, I'd be surprised. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Zero. Really? Zero? Yes. It's zero, zero, you say? Zero. Zero. Fucking zero. Mm-hmm. Wow. Farms owned by a single family that qualify to pay the estate tax is fucking zero. Uh huh. So you can tell your Republican, our Republican congressman who wants to stand up in a rural, in what is, you know, we are next door to a cornfield. Yeah. I'm not kidding. No, <laughs> this is, this is where we live. Hey. We can walk to a cornfield from our house. We can. <laughs> We can go on foot to yes. a diner right now. Right now. Full of Trump voters. <laughs> full of right Trump now. voters. Yeah, right well, now. It would have on been. Foot. Once they're all vaccinated, actually half of them are still there because you know, right. there's a lot of cheating <laughs> that goes left. on around here. Now. <laughs> they have no place else to go. But, <laughs> but, I, but we're, we're four blocks from that diner where yeah. uh, Mitt Romney, yep. presidential candidate Mitt Romney, ate a pancake apparently and pronounced it dry and terrible. And we're we're four blocks away from another diner that was shut another down temporarily diner. because the owner had some rustic ideas about race that he decided he'd share on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. So and his own daughter quit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we live there. But if so if Rod, if your Rodney Davis style congressman right. stands up and says, "Oh, we got to get rid of that estate tax for the sake of the family farm." The sake of a family farm. Someone finally st- went and took a look to see how many Wait individual family-owned businesses, Wait a minute. agriculture businesses owned by a single family, would be eligible to pay the estate tax, and it's huh? zero. It turns out it's it's a, it's a zero. That's a number. Yeah. That's, That's a real a number. number. And thank you, by the way, to um, Arabic uh, mathematicians for giving us that number. <laughs> for giving us so that can, zero. <laughs> we can use it to count the number of family farms that qualify for the estate tax. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know what? It it turns out. So it comes as a shock to you, Blue Gal, because it's been so long uh, mm-hmm. that competent, helpful government is actually very popular. Uh, which Unless re- it's led by a black man. Right. Oh, no, no, no. Can't have that. Can't have that. that and that was, that, was, um, that was a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, not mm-hmm. that it was led by a black man. The fact that my side didn't see it coming. Right. And, and the strategy for dealing with that. It might have been inevitable. This is my, one of those things that Barack Obama, being the first black president, might have felt, truly felt in his soul that he, as uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates said, he walked for eight years on ice and it never cracked. Right, right. Um, maybe it was just impossible for him to do to, to throw an elbow, to, to really get down and beat the shit out of the people who needed a, a severe beating mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. To, because that's that's what this situation called for. Um and that's a well, tragedy. I, I would, I would argue, and and I'm, God forbid, I should ever try to speak for Barack Obama. Uh huh. But I would argue he gave them a severe beating in 2012. He did. And he so did. 
he won. And and the fact that they took away all of his power to legislate uh-huh. turned him into American royalty. I've talked about that before. That's true. And so he is, for every one of my daughter's friends, mm-hmm. he is the greatest president ever and will be the greatest president ever for the rest of their lives. Are you saying he's our Meghan Markle, honey? Are you, that- <laughs> no, I'm not no. going there. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the only thing I want to say about Meghan Markle is I'm very grateful that she talked about her mental health journey. Yes. I think she probably saved a life or two by doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, many of us are born into difficult families or marry into difficult families. And uh, she had it in, you know, to the to the thousand times worse mm-hmm. because public spotlight and royalty and racism and, 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 mm-hmm. uh, and then she got an interview with Oprah, which a lot of people who are in difficult situations don't get. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's that's basically where I'm at on that. She did good um, service to to the people who um, who needed it. Yep. yep. And as somebody yep. said at the end of uh, uh, WandaVision, the true chaos magic was this um, actress from um, a TV series taking down the royal family by just yeah. being honest in public. Like, being honest that's, in public. Yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't and, – and this is – well, there's one other thing to be said, which is, I suppose, um, the first people to rush to the barricade to defend the British royal family <laughs> are the same people who beat their breast all day long about being a constitutional originalist. And 1776, I'm going to tweet that man. Patriot, have you seen my tricorn hat? I, I'm going to need it very soon because uh, people are reminding me that I voted for Trump. And it's really important that I not have to answer any of those questions. Um, anyway, it turns out. Oh, and to- Jimmy Kimmel did one of his person on the street interviews asking, you know, what do we celebrate on July 4th? And uh-huh. some people could say Independence Day uh-huh. and could not answer independence from what. And who did we fight in the Revolutionary War did not know. Yeah. And, you know, I I say that and, and I do want to ask you about this, this is Drift Glass. Sure. Um, and this is I know we're getting off on a tangent, but how do you think the low information voter sees the American Rescue Act and Joe Biden today as we're recording? Um, I think they will, uh, uh, I think that the lyric that comes to mind is go on, take the money and run. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. they will take everything. They'll take it all. Yeah. These people, as, as was noted, uh, back when people were writing about the tea party in a serious way, finally got around to it. These are people who live off of, um, government checks, mm-hmm. live mm-hmm. off of social security, disability, uh, disability, social security, they, government they, pensions. They, they take their, you know, their subsidized transportation, uh, mm-hmm. Through the government paid for roads to the government subsidized parks, so they can stand up and scream that that government is evil. Riding um, on Medicaid, yeah. wheelchairs and so forth. Um, yeah. The, yeah. The last episode of of was it maybe the last or second at last. This is unfair of me to bring this up of of Alpha House mm-hmm. when John mm-hmm. Goodman goes back to his hometown. Oh yeah, and yeah. and he's sitting around the barber shop listening to these these people these mooching white privileged redneck assholes who voted for him and and how foreign they have become to him because they're just Mm -hmm. they're angry and bitter and pissed off all the time and they live off the government dole they absolutely do and And they have pensions and they have they were unionized and on and on and on and yet they vote republican over and over again and then they they're sitting in the barbershop talking about well, he almost had a problem bringing in the tobacco crop, but he found some illegals, right. quote unquote, right. and hired those and got the crop in. So good for him. Not recognizing that everything they were doing against immigration, it, everything had to serve them. Right. If it served them, it was OK. And if it didn't serve their purposes at the moment, then they would use racism or hypocrisy or whatever yeah. it took just so that the money was flowing their way. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's yeah. a name for that. It's called white supremacy. White supremacy it is what it's called. If I'm white and if I need X, Y, or Z, then X, Y, or Z are good. 
and necessary yeah, yeah, and yeah. Are, are owed to me. And if anyone yeah. else uses X, Y, or Z or tries to expand X, Y, or Z to include everyone, that's bad because mm-hmm. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. I'm at the top of the food chain. And all of those perks and privileges and advantages accrue to me, even when mm-hmm. they're really not, even when those people are getting are getting screwed sideways by the mm-hmm. Republicans they put into office. They don't care because there's still there's this belief. And this is why I think that it's quite possible that we watched this week the final nail being driven into Ronald Reagan's coffin. I, um, I think Joe Biden saw it that way. His yeah. speech at the Rose Garden today uh-huh. was about trickle down not working and that <laughs> government has to work for average people <laughs> and it can't be tax cuts for billionaires all the time. Uh-huh. And that is wiping out. I mean, I said this to you last night uh-huh. uh, when Biden was speaking and during his speech. I said, wow, Rush Limbaugh really is dead. Mm hmm. You know, the government's evil, government's wrong, government can't do anything mantra cannot be spoken anymore. Well, that, and the white supremacy is the thing that squares that circle. Yep. Government is good when it serves me. But government, if it's giving those people $1,400, they're just going to waste it on bad. drugs, right? And, and you know, right. there's given illegals and, and you can tell them and you can show them and it doesn't it doesn't penetrate. They're Again, mm-hmm. they're lost. They're, these people are lost. Yeah. They're dead from the neck up. They're always going to be – they're just this way forever, which is why – they have have to turn to naked racism, out and out mm-hmm. racism, no no bones about it. This is who they are, and authoritarianism, mm-hmm. a, a contempt mm-hmm. for democracy, um, which in turn, in the action reaction universe of politics that that we live in, seems to be actually provoking a consensus around modifying the filibuster. Yeah, drift class. So let me go back to my original question again. Sure. The low information voter, you took that to mean Republicans, and I didn't necessarily mean that. I mean the people on the street that Jimmy Kimmel laughs at. Right. Who don't know who we fought the Revolutionary War. Yeah. You know, with, who, with whom did you fight that? And they have no idea. Who gave us the Statue of Liberty? What does it mean? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's where you go to take your picture, do a selfie. That voter, I mean, and maybe they don't vote. Maybe that's, but, the, the, see, but that's the point. The non-voter, yeah. how, how do you think they perceive? Mm-hmm. The American Rescue Act. Uh, I was thinking about this in this way. Mm-hmm. Um, back when, this is going to sound a little off off the topic, back when everybody served in the military. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, was a, it was a democratizing force. It was everybody yeah. from Jimmy Stewart and Clark Gable down to you know the average guy who, who ran a hot dog stand. Mm-hmm. Everybody wore green. And you had to, mm-hmm. if you really, if you wanted to run for public office for you know, 20 years after that, you had to be a veteran. Right. Um, and also baseball. Everybody went to the baseball game. Mm-hmm. Everybody took, you know, the train, took public transportation to the baseball game. There was a great democratizing force at work. That is long gone. But a, a regime where everybody needs to get a shot. Mm-hmm. There's no mm-hmm. golden needle full of a magic elixir. You're all getting the same shot. It's all coming from the same needle. You're all going to have the same bandaid over your arm. And the next person in line is going to step right where you were. And that's the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. There's something... Mm-hmm really wholesome about that yeah there is that yeah everybody yeah. under a certain level of income uh is going to get a check mm-hmm. everybody mm-hmm. um is going to get a shot in their arm two shots in their arm in our case um yeah. and that's the way it's going to be and everybody is fucking sick of quarantine <laughs> you right. know right. so it and, is and we all had we're united in that i mean mm-hmm. the politicization of masks and social distancing and closing businesses uh, is Trump's fault. Yeah. Um, it should not have been that way. Where, as, as Biden said, wearing a mask is patriotic. It is the green that we should all be wearing. Uh, yeah. But I guess what I wanted to get to, and I still haven't gotten there. <laughs> well, let me, um, let, me, let, me further, let me further the answer, which is I think when you're dealing with people who have a very low information and very low attention span, it's mm-hmm. like inception. Mm-hmm. You have to simplify, simplify, simplify what it is you want them to remember mm-hmm. about this mm-hmm. act. And it might mm-hmm. just be $1,400 mm-hmm. and it might be a shot and because there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. But I want them to think that this in the in the aggregate was good. This, this was, was good, good and, it, and Democrats voted for it That's and it. Republicans voted against it. That's all I want people to remember. That's all mm-hmm. they need to remember. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I would love it yeah. if they would have a lot more nuance and care about a lot of other things around it. But that's okay. It was good. No, I thought about this when I saw the word stimmy 
trending. Yeah. yeah. And it's <laughs> trending on Instagram and Facebook as well as Twitter. It's not, uh -huh. it seems to be all across, you know, waiting for my stimmy, waiting for my stimmy. Uh -huh. And uh, you just got to keep, and, and this is what the sales pitch is, right? right. After right. it passes, mm -hmm. which is, you know, and, and why Biden signed it two days early was let's get it out by the weekend. Let's have the direct deposits go out over the weekend uh, and, and then sell it. And you're going to have the second gentleman out there selling it That's <laughs> as right. well it's, as it's the awful. vice president and Mrs. Biden and Joe Biden and Dr. Biden and so forth. Everybody's going to be out selling this as government is doing a good thing for average people like you. Yes. And the when the face of that is a Democrat saying it, mm -hmm. I hope that will be enough of a reminder. Um, and we certainly are being helped along by our opponents who want to talk about cutting taxes for billionaires. Right. Yes. And did not vote for this. And there are Congress people. Joe Biden doesn't have to go for the jugular on this. No. Because... <laughs> There are plenty of people in the House who are going to run ads with video of the insurrection yeah, and then the face of their Republican opponent and a picture of the stimmy check mm -hmm. saying he voted no. Voted no. He voted no. Yeah. He doesn't want your grandma to – to, he doesn't want you to hug your grandma. Yeah. Why, exactly. why, is, why does why is Rodney Davis not want you to hug your grandma? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, and so the, the – under that, for the slightly higher information voter, comes the need to modify the filibuster, things like that. Because if mm -hmm. you want to, if you want to to undo all of this, just let Republicans steal the next election. Yeah, because it all yeah. goes away. And 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 in the legislation, there are all these little time bombs about, you know, this is looking at the last two years. No, and that's if you'd like the the Obamacare subsidies that are going up, and I I have permission to mention this from a girlfriend of mine. She and her husband. Uh, are both gig workers, but uh, in in being computer programmers, mm -hmm. you know they make pretty good money as gig workers, and uh, but they have to buy Obamacare, and mm -hmm. because it's two incomes um, and one kid, they uh, pay. You know mm -hmm. they don't have subsidies at the moment. Nope. nope. And uh, they, they, my girlfriend just kept saying to me on Twitter, or she DM'd me on Twitter. You know, I don't care about the stimulus check. I'm not going to get one. I'm going to have so much stimulus mm -hmm. from not having to pay $2,000 a month for health insurance. Right. That's right. And you know, that's, that is, <laughs> I'm getting a stimulus every month from that almost. Mm -hmm. you know, she's getting over, she will get over $1,000 in her pocket every month from the additional Obamacare subsidies. That, that's just the math. And the, I tweeted today, if you want to go to my Twitter at Blue Gal, I tweeted, uh, Kaiser Family Foundation has a calculator that they have attuned to the American Rescue Act. So if you want to see if your uh, Obamacare situation, if you buy insurance on the marketplace and you want to see if your mm -hmm. health care costs, your your premium will go down, uh, they've, they've got the new calculator there. Um, she pointed that out to me and said, look at how much I'm saving. I'm saving, you know, $1,800 a month. Uh, no, excuse me. I'm sorry. Twelve hundred dollars a month. She was paying over eighteen hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. for insurance. You know, it's just crazy. And that's um, money that can go right back. This is something I, I pitched all the time when I supported mm -hmm. local businesses and mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. was in, into uh, uh, manufacturing and so forth. Mm -hmm. That's money that goes back into the economy. That yeah. is money that your friend hopefully will spend on a local restaurant or lo supporting local institutions that help poor people. Or she'll save it for her kid's college. Right. I mean, right. the, the thing is, uh, Bill Schur did have a concern about this. He said he doesn't understand why more conservatives aren't for this, because when you put that much money into someone's pocket, mm -hmm. um, they have an opportunity. It is like a school voucher. They can go out and spend it on private education for their yes. kids. Yes. And everyone pointed out to him. Yeah, but it's not taking money out of the school budget exactly. to do that. Exactly. You're they not... can spend the money on anything they want. They can save for college. They can buy the kid a car. They can do whatever. But it's not taking money out of the education budget for everyone else who, which was who the wants point. to go to public school. Yes, that was, that that was, was always the, the point, point, which was to— That was Betsy DeVos's whole point. <laughs> right. To cripple public yeah. education by draining it right. of resources, which is exactly right. how you kill any government department. Right. You, you, you right. go after— it's funding. You you put a, a, a Louis DeJoy in charge of it, 
you bleed it dry, you you cripple the workforce, then you say, look, they can't do their job. We need to shut them down and privatize it. Oh, by the way, I happen to own the company that I will take the contract. Yeah. And that's how the plunder, that's how Reaganomic plunder of the government has been going on for 40 years. 40 and, years. And the only way they can hang on to power now is by cheating black and brown people out of their vote, by reinstituting Jim Crow in Republican states. Well, and anyone, anyone, it, anyone who can't wait in line right. for 10 hours to vote it, is cheated. Yep. It's absolutely cheated. Uh, I've mentioned this before, you know, our, our terrible House member, Rodney Davis, his margin of victory went up in 2020 it from did. 2018. It did. By, with ten, all the mail and ballots. The because there were a lot of people who couldn't get out to vote mm -hmm. in 2018 because they couldn't get out. And if they have a mail-in ballot, they can and they vote Republican. And I'm fine with that. I, yeah. I want everyone Everybody to vote. Everybody needs to vote. Right. <laughs> and then let the chips fall where they may. And, and let's right. fight it out over who's got the best of what. But the mm -hmm. idea that literally the only unifying um, factor at CPAC, the only unifying theme at CPAC, the only unifying policy Republicans have across this country is quick. Let's cheat harder. Let's make it harder yeah. for – and let's be clear. The base of the, of the Democratic Party are, are black people and brown people. And so when you are trying to affect uh, – when you're, when you're shutting down voting booths, when you're, when you're closing down souls of the polls and you're eliminating early voting and on and on and on, you are directly targeting those communities. That's the point. The point is to make sure those people have a much harder time getting their votes cast so you can cheat your way into office. And there's – and if they get away with it, you know, all of this good stuff goes away. That's right. Um, anyway, there's stuff you can do right now mm -hmm. to prevent that. Uh you can sign up for postcards to voters. Yeah. You can pick pick a Senate race. Start watching a Senate race. Now, don't pick a, a perfectly safe Senate race like our our senator. Like Illinois. You Tammy know, Duckworth. On. You don't need to pick yeah. that one. Tammy, Tammy's going to be okay. She'll be fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know how I know that? Because Mrs. Dick Durbin told me. Yeah. We, we got you covered. <laughs> don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. We got you covered, Tammy. Uh, and we love Tammy Duckworth. Don't. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. We love Tammy Duckworth. She's in possession uh, of one of your uh, pro knitting projects, isn't she? Yeah, for I knit for her baby, mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that it got to her. So that's that's all I needed to know. Right. Um. Anyway, uh, so pick a but pick a Senate race where a Republican incumbent has retired or a Republican incumbent is running for reelection, and uh, start focusing your attention on that race, even if you don't live in that state. Start keeping an eye on the news from that state and and get ready for the Democratic primary race to support the winner of the Democratic primary race. Tweet about them, Facebook about them, think about them, pray pray about them if you do if that's your thing, mm -hmm. and uh, feel free to contribute to them and uh, get her done. Uh, yeah. Because not everyone lives in a flippable Senate seat state. No, but we need. We need to Joe Manchin proof our majority in the we Senate. Really, really do. And that's hard. It really is hard. The yeah. way that the the numbers are 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 stacked against uh large urban areas. And in favor mm -hmm. that's what the Senate is. It, it is that's what the Senate is. designed yeah. to favor rural, you know, areas to, to pit give them way more power than they deserve. Forty million, yep. forty million Democrats represent forty million more people. Mm -hmm. And they only have fifty fifty Senate. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh you said support local businesses. You want you want I'll let you go off on that for a minute. <laughs> well, no, I just want to say that there are local businesses that have probably in your community, certainly in ours, uh Cafe Moxo, top of my list uh this week, um just has been cranking out uh free uh meals uh for people who need them for a year. For a year. The entire yeah. pandemic. And and you know, I will zip over there and there's it yeah, next Tuesday, and they you show these, you know, Row after row, rank after rank of brown paper bags. And they do it, and they do it gladly. Um, there are lots of organizations, probably in your local community, uh, that help people. There, there's an immigrant group uh, that helps immigrant families in Springfield, especially mm -hmm. ones who, who have no documentation, who've had a really brutal time. It, it was, you know, their their food supply was effectively cut off when the schools shut down for their kids. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of those yeah. families fed their children using school lunch programs. And, there, and so a bunch of volunteers got together to deliver food to those houses. Then they graduated up to outdoor pantries, uh, pop-up pantries. Then they graduated up to collecting money, going to the store, and just buying food. Um, so there's probably a lot of organizations like this in your community. 
um, that need your help. And if you have extra stimulus money, if, if, if there's part of a check you can you can part with, please write it to them, donate it to them, uh, whether they're a church group or a, a secular or, or not, it doesn't matter. If they're helping mm-hmm. the community and they need your financial support, please be generous with the money that, that is coming to you that you may or may not need to meet your daily expenses. If you're, and, if you're, and I did think it was so funny. When we did have someone write to us and said that they're sending us $14 so they can be a member <laughs> of the 1%. Bless their hearts. And I said, and, yeah, that's yeah. perfect. You know, well, you know and, and if, you, <laughs> if you have, after you've met all of your, your obligations, your charitable obligations and your good works, so you, you have a couple of dimes left over, throw them our way. Cause this is how 1%, we make a living. $14, yeah. 14 whole dollars. Uh huh. I also <laughs> wanted to say, it. thank you. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that there was one sentence this week by Bill Crystal that sent me on oh, an odyssey of discovery and Bill adventure. Bill Crystal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'll just mention it in passing. I was listening to the Bulwark podcast, monitoring, uh-huh. you know, monitoring enemy podcasts. Um, and he was going on this long disquisition about how the Republican Party was full of Republicans. And isn't that a shame? And he and Mona Sharon were weeping into each other's beer. And then he <laughs> said something that said, oh, crap, now I have to write about this. If, if, if you had told me 10 years ago that the Republican Party, blah, 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 blah. I thought, you know what? Because because liberal bloggers weren't telling you anything yeah. ten years ago, Bill Crystal. No, we we were telling you sixteen years ago uh, when I started <laughs> blogging, and fifteen years ago, and fourteen years ago. And I just went back and just looked through what was being said um, by me because I have archives. Yeah. Uh, ten, just for a month, ten years ago, mm-hmm. and it was mm-hmm. a lot of shit. And ten years ago was the uh, uh, t- I'm sorry, eleven years ago, we were repeating the. Um, um, I think Reginald King's uh, American Dad, the massive oh, post, wow. the post that was yeah. going to change the world. It was an open letter to conservatives. As mm-hmm. a former conservative, let me tell you, I want you to come back because you're being crazy. And he, mm-hmm. and it was the most well-researched thing I'd ever seen at the time. Links to everything. And it was just long, long, long list of, holy shit, you people have become a racist shithole. You're lying all the time. You're paranoid all the time. And you keep just are a disaster area. You got to stop. And it was passed around everywhere on the internet and it accomplished nothing. (laughs) I mean, it was a good thing. I'm glad he did it, but that's the point. The point is it doesn't matter how much of a, of a data tank you roll into battle. These people are not going to change their minds. It doesn't matter. Um, Well, and isn't that interesting that the, that the thing that that is such a contrast from the Biden administration. Oh yeah, yeah. Of they can be taught. Yeah. I, you know, I I thought about that with uh, how much praise Joe Biden uh, gave today to Chuck Schumer. Yeah. Yep. And Chuck, you really pulled it out. Thanks, Chuck. You did that for me. I really appreciate all you did for me. Mm-hmm. And I thought, really, Chuck Schumer? And then I realized he really did figure out how to get Joe Manchin and Bernie Sanders. Yes, he did. To listen to each other to pull, and put it together. To pull on the and, same rope in the same direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And and uh, he was on like Colbert, I think it was this week. I'm talking about Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer was on <laughs> late night television i just think that's remarkable oh my god uh yeah hi i'm chuck schumer you know not not a parody chuck schumer the actual chuck schumer and he said i love bernie sanders and i love joe manchin i know that sounds corny but i do and they're both on my leadership team Uh uh-huh and i get them in the room every monday we get together and i wonder if you know a little bagel a little schmear a little coffee we're gonna talk it all out um (laughs) But whatever he does, uh, he he did. We we meet every Monday and we talk about our agenda for the week and we work it out and we listen to each other and and we realize what a tremendous responsibility we have mm-hmm. to getting things done for. And then he uses the phrase that I hate so much: the American people, because mm-hmm. I always edit that out of every. It's voters. Right. <laughs> it's <Right>. voters, <laughs> mm-hmm. not the American people. It's voters. Um, but, you know, he talked about it. And and so heaping all of that praise on, on Chuck Schumer, first of all, that's a really good way to dig it to Trump. <clears throat> yes, yes. Twist that is. knife. Yes. Uh, but also, uh, it's true. Yeah. He did He did get stuff done. Well, and um, can I mention that there uh, – a trend going across social media, which I'm barred from, you know, particip- participating in, mm-hmm. but I can still observe. Um, 
from from Charlie Pierce on down saying, I have never underestimated a political figure as much as I underestimated Joe Biden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but uh, oh, but, the, but the, the contrast between that and Bill Kristol yeah. of, oh, if you'd only told me 10 years ago, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Well, you wouldn't have listened. No, and you, you and didn't, you didn't listen didn't. then. And you're not listening now. And I, I so. pulled... I pulled a bunch of video from Bill Crystal from 10 years ago and nine years ago and four mm-hmm. years or seven years ago. And it was slagging liberals and it was talking shit about Obamacare and it was a bunch of commie nonsense. And how, and it was just he's the same asshole he always was. Has and, he learned and, anything about the Iraq war? Uh, he's never apologized for it. and He has nope. no intention of doing so nope. because nope. it's not his brand and there's nobody to hold yep. him accountable for it. Um, but meanwhile, the, the people who who were you know, Joe, Joe, this, I agree. I, I Joe was not in my top tier at all. Yeah, right. Um, right. But and and here are all the people going. You know, I really underestimated him, et cetera. Well, first of all, there's a quote that goes, um, "Cometh the hour, cometh the man." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and you know, mm-hmm. the, the history will will open up to the right person at the right time. It's a little mystical. I'm not sure I believe it all, entirely, but it certainly seems to be the case here. And secondly, um, it is uh, it is uh, I responded to some per- some person offline with. Yeah, Joe uh, wasn't in my top tier at all. You know, my mm-hmm, top tier mm-hmm. were these people. Um, mm-hmm. And I I opposed him until he won the nomination. And then yeah. he had my unreserved support. Exactly. That's how fucking politics works. Yeah. That's how but it's you know, your class, that takes me back to the night that he won South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say your Kucinich within, days. but No, okay. but the night that Joe Biden won South Carolina uh-huh. and within 48 hours – he had the support of six of his opponents yeah. in the primary race. Six or seven of them mm-hmm. had endorsed Joe Biden. Yep. And I've got to believe that that conversation Biden had with these folks was, we've got a fucking racist in the White House, and we've got a bunch of fucking racists backing him up. Mm-hmm. And we've got, a, we've got a general electorate that we can't trust not to vote for the white guy. Right. Right. So the gay guy and the Indian woman and the hippie and I'm you know type of Beto the hippie yeah. and the and the and the and the mm-hmm. I want what you want mm-hmm. and you come sit at my table and I'll get you what you want but let's get this asshole out of office yeah by putting an old white guy that everybody trusts and everybody knows at the head of the ticket and that black voters trust. Yeah. Well, and that's the part of civics yeah. class that um, that tiny, tiny, loud minority mm-hmm. of red mm-hmm. rose um, uh, leftists never took, which is yeah, that you yeah. fight like the devil during the primary. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. the person who wins on your side, you get behind them because that's mm-hmm. how you win. It's like, no, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. I, my guy doesn't win, I want to tear the whole thing down. Right. It was all rigged and it wasn't fair and fuck you, nothing. And then from then on, the, the, you know, the, the whining about Joe Biden that's been going on from this tiny, tiny corner of the internet has just been like, Jesus, guys, it, it really is just, I just shut mute up. Them. I mean, I, well, I, I just mute them. I, I do too. I don't know who they are and I pray for them because they may be. 12 for no, all that's I, the thing. I don't know you know I, if they're I don't 12 they and don't know any better and they've had their right. first beer and they're angry that's fine i understand that that was yeah. me a very long time ago when i was voting <laughs> for john anderson i get it right right but right it is not how human beings conduct adult affairs in politics when there's so much on the line that's not how it's done and if you are branding yourself as that person for the rest mm-hmm. of time mm-hmm. if you are glenn greenwald and this is just it, oh yeah it, for the rest Again, of time people i mute drift yeah, exactly not only do i mute glenn greenwald i mute the term glenn greenwald on well, twitter i don't want to see the words well and <laughs> i'd like to add one more thing um friend of the of our podcast and blog of uh, the rectification of names the the yes the blog has a new writer named brian o'neill uh oh. who's planning a saint patrick's day post there on three millennial irish youtubers and what their channels say about contemporary Irish society. And this is on March 17th. And he describes it as a mitzvah to boost their subscribers. And you should go there and have a look. So that's what he's right. going to have up there. And you should go check out the Rectification of Names, which is a very fine blog. And one of the uh, one of the real um, go-to David Brooks blogs. If I can't think of something to write about David Brooks, I go steal from them. So Is that's that your I- Bl- Blansky? Yes, yes. Yes. He also guest posts over at Steve M's at yeah. No More Mr. Nice Blog from time to time. And and unlike um, 
single shingle idiots like me, they have <laughs> they have like a stable of writers in some of these places. So yeah, there's a, he's over places, there, yeah, and it's it's one. And I believe uh, Mr. O'Neill might be a supporter of this podcast. So well, thank you. Know, you. It's win win. Let's do a news roundup, Drift Class. All right. Merrick Garland arrived for his first day as the new U.S. Attorney General to a standing ovation from his staff. They are going to rue the day <laughs> that they stopped him from a lifetime appointment on the yeah. Supreme Court. Where All he right. couldn't actually launch lawsuits. Right. Uh, the Senate confirmed Representative Marsha Fudge as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, making her the first black woman to lead that agency in more than four decades. And she is a housing activist who yes, believes that housing is a human right. It's going to be a wonderful day for that agency as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. Let's talk about him for a minute. Yeah, I've heard of Bless him. Bless him. Bless his heart. You know what? You know, he's chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. What? Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, he is, uh, I think, very interested in working on a $15 minimum wage. But yes, he, he spent is. a lot of time this week making... Huge noises about Republican members of Congress demanding a permanent repeal of the estate tax. Uh Uh-huh. While at the same time, Senate Republicans told us that we cannot afford to provide $1,400 direct payments to the working class, they have no problem introducing a bill this week to repeal the estate tax, which would provide a $1.7 trillion tax break to the billionaire class. Total hypocrisy. I love it. Don't forget, how many farms? Uh, zero. zero. How many family I, farms? Zero. I love it when Bernie's doing Bernie. Yeah. Um, Arkansas just banned abortion with the help of a right-wing hate group, a family council, which says it worked closely with the bill's primary sponsor. And and the whole purpose of all of these bills is just to get them to the Supreme Court and overturn Roe v. Wade. Right. That's the... Some Americans could receive coronavirus stimulus checks as soon as this weekend, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said... This is, of course, just the first wave, Saki said, adding payments to eligible Americans will continue throughout the course of the next several weeks. The U.S. death rate increased 15 percent last year as a result of COVID-19. This is the deadliest year in recorded U.S. history. And I liked what someone on Twitter said where they said, I would give Donald Trump credit for uh, Operation Warp Speed if he would also take credit for Operation Warped Reality. 70% of adults say they support Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package, while 28% oppose the legislation. Yeah, that's... They should return the checks, right? You're not going to get around that. Uh, The House passed two bills, uh, both aimed at strengthening the nation's gun laws this week. That's the House. And they're going to keep sending legislation to the Senate that will get a up or down vote because yep. Chuck Schumer is in charge of that. Mm-hmm. And those senators that are running for reelection, again, watch those Senate races. Mm-hmm. You want to be sure to know exactly which Republicans voted these down and make noise about it. Mm-hmm. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds signed a Republican backed bill into law that makes it harder to vote. By cutting the state's early voting period, closing the polls an hour earlier on Election Day, Republicans in the State House and Senate approved the changes over the opposition of every Democratic legislator saying election integrity must be protected. They noted, however, that Iowa has no history of election irregularities mm-hmm. and that November's election saw record turnout with no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Mm-hmm. Mark Elias of the Democracy Group is um, just terrified. And alarmed by yeah. this. Yeah. Well, and, and as, we as he should be. all should be. And mm-hmm. we're going to have to, as you say, modify the filibuster mm-hmm. as federal laws to stop this nonsense. Yeah. We used to have them until John Roberts was uh, yeah. elevated to yeah. the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Georgia Senate passed a bill uh, to repeal no excuse absentee voting and require more voter ID because this is a Republican thing. In Arizona, they're doing the same thing. Yep. In a newly released December phone call, the former guy can be heard pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State chief investigator to find evidence of fraud with absentee by mail ballots, telling her she would be praised for overturning results that were in favor of Biden. Whatever you can do, it would be it's a great thing. Trump told Francis Watson, adding that when the right answer comes out, you'll be praised. Something bad happened. Yeah, suck it. A former acting Secretary of Defense, Chris Miller, says he believes that Trump's speech on the morning of January 6th caused a mob to violently attack the U.S. Capitol later that day. He said, would anybody have marched on the Capitol and tried to overrun the Capitol without the president's speech? I think it's pretty much definitive that it wouldn't have happened. 
an expert on Georgia's racketeering law, was hired to help prosecutors investing potential efforts by Trump and others to influence. And you know who we mean by others. Yeah, we, we do. We mean Lindsey Graham. Yes, we do. To uh, change the ballots in the 2020 election in Georgia. Mm hmm. Um, 30 percent of Americans say they won't be getting a coronavirus vaccine, while 45 percent say they will. And 22 percent saying they've already been vaccinated. About the 30 percent of Americans, I'd like to quote Nick Fury saying a lot of guys think that until the pain starts. Yeah. Until your family won't have you over at Thanksgiving. That's until right. you can't come to our Fourth of July picnic. Yep. Because you haven't when, been vaccinated. That's when the family and peer group pressure becomes all right. <laughs> fine. Yeah, I'll do fine. it. And yeah. that's great. Whatever whatever you need to do, that's fine with me. And this is on you, honey, in local news. <laughs> in the local news, our Congressman Rodney Davis, uh, one of his priorities this week was to send a letter to House leadership demanding that Newsmax be available on Capitol Hill television sets. Oh, God. Yeah. That, he, he, he had time to write a letter about that this he week. He did. He has a lot of time on his hand these days because he's not doing much of anything else. <sighs> Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website at Internet Kitty, sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Jasmine. Jasmine is sitting in a laundry basket in this picture, which we must now refer to as a Jasmine basket. Yes. That is not subject to debate, as you will see from the look on Jasmine's face. Jasmine is half long black fur and half gorgeous yellow eyes. And of course, when not using the rule of eminent domain to acquire laundry baskets... Jasmine eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Jasmine at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. We're going to get that Louis DeJoy out of there. Yeah. Let her on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal. We have Patreon. We have our regular postal address where you can mail us a letter or a contribution. And all of that information on how to do that is at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. Thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have read all 788 pages of the COVID-19 rescue plan and want to know what happened to the freshly poured cat food subsidies that Biden definitely promised. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.